a neighborhood bar that is a chameleon. We're trying to be Hamilton's Max's Kansas City or Hamilton's CBGB. This building was built in 1893 and it's been nothing but a bar. We came in with the intention of opening up a live music venue. Our main and biggest uh, magnet that brought us to this uh, area was the fact that there was a lot of really cool things happening artistically and our friends were involved in a lot of the art uh, exhibitions, installations and things that were happening here. So it felt very comfortable and very fitting for us to uh, put a live music venue on the street. We bought this building in April 2009. My business partner, Glenn Fallman, uh, had this crazy idea of uh, having another live music venue in the city of Hamilton. I grew up at uh, the Corktown over by St. Joe's, um, Corktown Tavern, and uh, I used to go there all the time. Uh, that, to me, that was the room to see the bands. And about five years ago, um, another guy bought it and renovated and uh, he was afraid of leather jackets and skulls. After I stewed for about uh, two or three years, I was tired of drinking at home and uh, felt that there was a, a hole in the local scene and so decided, found this place and uh, decided we'd try and fill it. Um, a lot of the money that we had, and it wasn't much, but it all went behind the walls. It went into putting electricity in our walls, uh, new plumbing. Uh, and, 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 and just upgrading it to specs for, uh, you know, everything that we're trying to do. Wow, it didn't uh, have that sort of new stigma to it or the new car smell, you know. It, 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 we still wanted it to smell like there was a, a few pops that were kind of rubbed into the uh, rug, so to speak, you know. But it, it happened like a happy accident. We, we really came on board uh, with a little bit of money, uh, especially in terms of decor. And because of that, it really helped in creating this vibe of making it seem like we've been here forever, as crazy as that sounds. The biggest hurdle that we had uh, in, in, in you know, trying to find any sort of uh, direction with this bar was the name. We really wanted to be sort of a trademark that represented all of us collectively, but all of us individually as well. So one afternoon, after about maybe a hundred names going back and forth, Glenn just brainstormed, you know, kind of a, almost an instinct and said, uh, this ain't Hollywood. And we just kind of locked eyes and thought that, that it was perfect. It was a, a record that really defined a lot of uh, what this bar is all about in terms of attitude. We love rock and roll. We love Hamilton. Uh, the name comes from one of the most infamous rock and roll bands from Hamilton called uh, the Forgotten Rebels. Unpretentious Hamilton rock bar. Although we'll book anything, but uh... Pepper Jack's Cafe closed a few months before we opened up, uh, and the uh, talent buyer and manager of that venue, his name is Ken Inouye. Uh, Ken asked us where our intentions were with the bar at the get-go as a venue, and we were we knew we wanted to do rock and roll. We just really weren't too sure how much we wanted to do and what else we wanted to do. Um, Ken introduced uh, the hip-hop community to us single-handedly. He was very instrumental. I mean, we knew people that participated in hip-hop, uh, like Lee Reed. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we, we definitely needed someone to kind of bridge the gap. Um, Lee Reed is ferocious. Lee Reed has bigger balls than two oceans put together. He's like the most... Um, intelligently outspoken person in this city. Hip-hop in this, in this city is, uh, it, it doesn't have a long history um, and it hasn't been, it doesn't have a deeply entrenched way of doing things and a big part of that is the, the space that's provided for hip-hop in, in Hamilton hasn't always been great and uh, so the fact that they let us book Hip hop shows here. Uh, there's been quite a few in the last couple of years. Yeah, y'all know what I'm about. Mouth music, make it drop it, dump the snow down, huh? You get to interact with people uh, across sort of genres or subcultures uh, because this place invites you know, things like hip-hop and punk into the same space, uh, you know, uh, 
heads, hip hop heads get to meet punks, you know, um, punk heads, and uh, that's that's a good thing, you know. It's uh, uh, it introduces people to new new ways of making music, new ways of uh, thinking about how to go about their music. There's different business models for all types of music, and I think as people have exposure to the way other types of music are run, uh, it's a good thing for everybody. I believe those shows are awesome because we are we're really blessed to have a great following of people who. You know, Lou always brings up, you know, they all know the words, they all sing along, and that's a great feeling on its own. But when you had that on top of having all these other gentlemen, you know, and performers around that you can learn from and be around, it was, it was pretty unstoppable yeah. combination. I always do think that every time I see Live How You Live play here, I always think this might be the last time before they're on their way. I just think that it's got a bit of a, of a character that keeps growing there. Um, it's not just like a shell and four walls with a sound system and a stage. It's like it's an entity and an environment that there's something spiritual or something happening there that you can't explain that. When you get there, it just something takes takes over. When you get on stage and when you're playing, it you never know where the show's going to take you. And whatever set list or plans you have, you throw it out the window and you just rock the shit out of that crowd that's there. And there's always a story every time you uh, go there. It's like, oh, the shotgun up here. You know, I'm sure people have told that story or whatever when they took it down and finding, you know, it used to be a, like a bootlegging place. Uh, all you had to do was go to the doctor and kind of wink or slip him a buck or something, and he'd write you out a prescription for alcohol. And so 90% of the bottles that we found was a Hamilton business, uh, and they all say uh, Hawks, Invalids, Port Wine, Reconstructive Tonic for the Debilitated, and etc cetera, etc cetera. so um, it's it's booze masquerading as medicine it looks old uh, but I've been told it's from like late 70s early 80s um, and I had uh, I don't know much about guns but uh, somebody fired it and something happened on the inside so there's like an inclusion or something in the barrel so if you're gonna fire it again you'd blow yourself up but um, to me, if it was 100 years old and stuck in a corner somewhere, that would be one thing. But the fact that it's like, say, from 1980 and it's stuck in the corner, to me, that's scarier. <laughs> like, uh, you know, it wasn't just forgotten. I think it was put there and, and all sorts of shit put on top of it for a reason, right? So. We've got a great clientele. Our daytime clientele are uh, primarily older gentlemen that like to come in for an afternoon drink watch TV, gab about politics, gab about sports, gab about the latest trade, uh, gab about the occupying stuff that's happening in Toronto. Uh, so it's more of like, you know, a meeting of minds and talking about current events. Uh, once about seven o'clock kicks in, it just seems like the room turns over and it becomes more artistically minded, more musically driven, and all the energy and when people come here, they talk music. You know, you talk to these people and it's like you're looking in the mirror and, and this, these people are you. You know, it's really hard when you, you meet so many bands playing different shows, different club owners, and when you meet them, it's like, okay, this guy doesn't care what I'm talking about. Or it's like, but <laughs> these people, every single person they're was living genuine it, living and it's it, like, yeah. this is me, they are us. Like, it's the, we, they just get it. And Lou gets it and everybody that Lou brings to the club gets it. And if you don't get it, you don't go there. <laughs> yeah.